Are we talking John Wick with a surfboard? Okay, everybody, today we're going all the way back to 1991 to look at kind of a slightly forgotten gem, but a really cool flick that everybody should see and at least check out one time. We are talking about Point Break. But before we dive into this anymore, before we look at this gem any further, once and again, and as always, do the trailer. It's the ultimate rush. There's nothing that comes close to it. Not even sex. We are the ex-president. It's total commitment. It's a real thin line between life and death. I'm not a cook. It's not tragic to die doing what you love. If you want the ultimate, you gotta be willing to pay the ultimate price. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and please don't forget to vote. You want to nail the bank robbers and be a big hero? Definitely. The ex-presidents are surfers. You're trying to tell me the FBI is going to pay me to learn to surf? Fear causes hesitation. And hesitation will cause your worst fears to come true. He'll take you to the edge. Past it. This is going to be a great day, Johnny. Think taxpayers would like it, Utah, if they knew that they were paying a federal agent to surf and pick up girls. Babes. Big one. The correct term is babes, sir. Whoa! Adios, amigo! Pure adrenaline. Does either one of you have anything even remotely interesting to tell me? I caught my first tube this morning, sir. Okay, this motion picture was directed by Catherine Bigelow. Whether you know it or not, I really love her flicks. I think she's really good, she's really talented, and she shows more of it here. Let's get on track to what she's done. She's done a movie you know I love, Strange Days. She's also done things like Near Dark and The Hurt Locker and Zero Dark Thirty and The Way to Water in Detroit and K-19, The Widowmaker and The Loveless and Blue Steel. So, she's got a really solid track record. Her films always look good, all you need to know. All right, playing Bodie, the late, great Patrick Swayze. Let's do this. We're talking about he was in The Outsiders. He was in Dirty Dancing and Roadhouse and Ghost and Red Dawn and Grandview USA and Steel Dawn and Next to Kin and uh, Black Dog and Donnie Darko and Uncommon Valor, uh, Skate Town USA. Oh, uh, fucking fatherhood. Did I say that one? I can't remember. He was on TV in North and South and the Renegades. And a fun little thing. He was in the uh, Rosanna video by Toto way back in the day with Cynthia Rhodes, who was actually in Dirty Dancing with him. So, check that out. You'll see his face pop up. It is what it is. Playing FBI agent Johnny Utah. Where do they get these names? The one and only Keanu Reeves. Let's run the number. Of course he was in The Matrix, and of course he was in The Matrix Reloaded, and all the other Matrix this and Matrix that, and of course some other classics like Speed, and River's Edge, and Youngblood, and Dangerous Liaisons, and My Own Private Idaho, and the Bill and Ted flicks we all know, and Bram Stoker's Dracula, and uh, Johnny Mnemonic, and uh, Chain Reaction, and The Day the Earth Stood Still, which is actually pretty good, and The Replacements, and The Gift, uh, 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 Hardball, and of course... Of course, he was, you know, John Wick and one, two, three, four, eight, nine, however many of those things have been at this point. It doesn't make a difference. We love those flicks. Just the way it is. Let's keep moving. Playing Agent Babas. Gary Busey. <sighs> Got a bit of a special place in my heart for Gary Busey. Kind of guy gets overlooked. Really did some good work. Let's just get going. Okay, okay, okay. 
You know he was in the movie I love, DC Cap. He was also in stuff like, you know, Lethal Weapon and Under Siege and the Buddy Holly story and Predator 2. And uh, Big Wednesday, for Christ's sake. And A Star is Born and Carney and Barbarossa and Silver Bullet and Let's Get Harry and uh, Drop Zone and Soldier. So, I mean, and there's a bunch of shit I can't remember, whatever. <sighs> Gary Busey, been around a long time. Before he became like a walking meme, the guy was a serious actor. Let's keep going. Playing Tyler, Lori Petty. She was kind of on the rise at one point, and then not, and then, and then, is what it is. Let's go. She was in Tank Girl. She was in stuff like uh, Free Willy and A League of Their Own. And on TV, Brimstone and Lush Life and uh, Booker and uh, Miami Vice and Head of the Class and House and uh, The Cleaner and Station Eleven and uh, 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 Orange is the New Black. So... You know, been on the scene for quite a while now. I know this movie still feels like it was yesterday to me, but these players in this thing have been on the scene for well over 30 years. And playing FBI Director Harp, John McGinley. Need we say more? What is it exactly you do here? Anyway, we're talking about he was in Office Space. We're talking about he was in Seven and Platoon and Wall Street and Sweet Liberty and Talk Radio and uh, The Rock, and Any Given Sunday, and Get Carter, and The Animal, and Wild Hogs, and uh, uh, World Trade Center, and uh, he, was, uh, he was on TV and Scrubs, obviously, stuff like that. So, been around for a long time now, high energy kind of guy. You know what you're going to get. Cool shit, good work, just the way it goes. There's a few other faces you got to keep an eyeball out for this in this motion picture. We're talking about the late, great Tom Sizemore pops up. We're talking about that dude that was in Cyborg with Van Damme pops up. And I'm not going to give away a name, but all i got to say is, give it away, give it away, give it away now, all that kind of shit. So there's other faces and other names you're going to recognize. Just it is what it is. They might not be the main players, but they pop up and roll with it. Okay, everybody, I'm going to do this in 90 seconds a lot, so I can keep it short, keep it fast, keep it entertaining, keep it moving, so I get to much rather be the summation. And we can have all the real fun that we really we like to get into. The movie starts out, you got this guy, he's uh, taking his final exams or whatever at the FBI training headquarters. It is one, Johnny Utah, former college quarterback, star, now FBI agent. And you see him running the guns, and he's just doing this whole normal thing and graduating. But before you know it, they're out to send him on his first assignment. And that's when you find out the first assignment is... <gasps> the ex-presidents. And you see what the ex-presidents are. What they are is a bunch of dudes that rob banks. They robbed a whole bunch of banks. And they all wear masks of former presidents. You got Reagan, you got LBJ, you got Nixon, and whoever. It is what it is. But nobody can catch these guys. Nobody can figure these guys out. They've done like 30 robberies over the last three years, and nobody's even come close. They're always in and out in 90 seconds, and they're always disappearing like the wind. Well, you find out that they're going to take one young Keanu Reeves and hook him up with the old grizzled veteran one. Gary Busey. And they have this really high strung out of his goddamn mind FBI director, but we'll get into that more later. Gary Busey finally tells him the secret of what he thinks is really going. He goes, I think these guys are surfers. What? Surfers? You're stupid. No, really. They find some wax on the scene and it's the kind of wax you put on a surfboard. So before you know it, Gary Busey gets the bright idea. I'm going to take this young guy. I'm going to stick him out there on the surf. I'm going to get him in with all the surfer kids and get him to know the lingo, know the people, and somehow find the bank robbers. Well, while he's out there training on a surfboard, he almost drowns because Keanu's not a surfer, and he runs into one Lori Petty, one Lori Petty who saves his life and winds up teaching him how to surf after Johnny Uotal lies to her about his family dying, just like hers did, and all this other kind of shit to play in her sympathies. It is what it is. As time goes by, you see him out there, he's mixing with everybody, he winds up thinking that give it away, give it away, give it away now, and all those dudes are really the bank robbers. Mm -mm, but it's not. It's a bunch of other guys that he bumps into. A bunch of guys led by this spiritual uh, thrill seeker, if you want to call him that. One, Patrick Swayze. He winds up getting in with these guys, becoming friends with these guys, getting well associated with these guys, and dating Patrick Swayze's ex-girlfriend, and the whole list of stuff goes on. Well, they're having laughs, they're having fun, and all this other kind of stuff, but then, oh yeah, Johnny Utah says, I think they're going to rob this bank on this date. Let's get out there and find out. And son of a bitch, they try to pull it off. And there's a chase scene, and Johnny Utah can actually drop the bang on Mr. Patrick Swayze and does it. Well, Patrick Swayze and the boys are like, man, he knows who we are. And he's an FBI agent. He was our friend. He was our buddy. What are we going to do? So what do they do? They take him skydiving. Are they going to make his parachute not open? Mm, well, 
We'll get into all that later on. But they take him skydiving only to let him know that they have to be let go because they now have his girlfriend hostage, one Lori Petty. And if they don't get away, this one psychopath that works for him is going to cut her open from head to hell. So it is what it is. You get basically just, I'm not going to tell you any more than that. You've got enough. That's, that's the whole story. Will they get away? Will he arrest them? They're all kind of friends. They're all kind of thrill seekers. They're all a little bit crazy. Blah, 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 blah. Lethal weapon surfboards. Whatever. You get the idea. Let's get going to the summation. All right, everybody. Does Point Break work? Yeah, Point Break works. Yeah, it has a couple flaws here and there. It has some of that 80s unbelievability to it. But other than that, it's a good time, a fun ride, and a well-directed flick. So before we dig into any more, before we get into all the little details, let's just get the big three out of the way. The directing, Catherine Bigelow. I need to say no more. Her track record speaks for itself. The movie's good. It looks good. It's shot well. It moves at a nice pace. Catherine Bigelow does what Catherine Bigelow does. Uh, I don't even know what to say beyond that. The writing. The writing's solid for the kind of motion picture this is. I mean, it's a, it's a, almost like a cop buddy flick, but he's winding in with these guys that are all like, you know, whatever, bank robber, Robin Hoods, if you will. So, the lines, the dialogue, it's all that. If you like the kind of dialogue you're going to get from Lethal Weapon or Die Hard, then the shit works just as good in this thing, too. Don't expect, you know, War and Peace, but it's above average, it's solid, it's well done, writing's good enough. And the acting! Oh, my God. Okay, okay. Before we get to Keanu, let's just go through the other names in this motion picture. I gotta say... People forget how good of an actor Gary Busey was. I know, as like I said earlier, he's become a meme now. He's like this guy who's not quite right. You know, he hurt himself when he was younger. The whole nine yards, we get it. But when he was younger, Gary Busey was a really good actor. I don't care if it was drama. I don't care if it was comedy. I don't care what it was. The guy was a good actor. And you get to see it in this motion picture. You get to see him show his craft in this motion picture. So... It's sad when people see him on, like, celebrity cooking or some stupid shit, and he's out of his tree now. When he was younger, Gary Busey was a really good, solid actor. Good in everything you put him in, just the way it went. And, of course, you got Patrick Swayze. Patrick Swayze delivers in this thing. As this kind of quasi-zen spiritual bank robber who's addicted to thrills, Patrick Swayze delivers. He's always on point, always does a great job. I mean... It might not be remembered with his biggest, biggest hits. I know it's not Ghost. I know it's not Dirty Dance. And I know it's not Roadhouse. But the acting work in this is just as good as any of those, if not better. So, Patrick Swayze delivers. Laurie Petty, who really kind of flies under the radar in a lot of instances, is really, really good and really, really solid in this. And she's kind of like the untypical choice that you would use in a motion picture like this, to be honest. I mean, it's a surfer movie about surfer girls. You expect... A kind of look, you know, the California blonde, big hair, the, you know, whatever, all that kind of stuff. And she's really the anti that through this entire motion picture. But she does well. She carries it off extremely well. And she does her role perfectly. So, when you're talking about the cast, and, uh, uh, okay, McGinley is so far over the top, it's almost comical and ridiculous. It's, it's, we'll get to that later. But he's in it too. And finally, okay, okay, we're, we're here, we're here now, we're talking about the acting actor. <sighs> Keanu. We all love Keanu Reeves, right? We do. We love his movies. We love the stuff he's in. He's got a great presence, he's got a cool look, you know, he's got a great vibe. Everybody likes him as a human being in real life, all that kind of shit. But God damn, he's not good with dialogue. I'm sorry. He just never has been and never, I don't think, ever really... Well, okay, I shouldn't say that. Maybe he's a little bit better now than he used to be. But this was still at a time when he came off in Dialogue Land where it was just like, oh, God, that feels forced. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. There's a great scene in the beginning of the motion picture with Gary Busey and him screaming and yelling at each other and all that. And with Gary Busey, it just felt real and visceral and all that kind of shit. And with Keanu, it kind of felt like, I'm supposed to be emotional, so I'm going to yell a little louder now. And you're just like, ah, you can see the difference in level that these two dudes operate at. Again, Keanu has a presence. He, he's one of those guys that when he's on screen, you're like, okay, he's cool, whatever. 
But let's not think he's Lawrence Olivier or anything, okay? It, it doesn't show here. It just is what it is. Let's, let's just roll. Okay, let's get back on track now that I was going into the acting world for a long time about why this motion picture works. Because it delivers on what's supposed to be. It's good, solid action with a decent, drawn-out story in it. I mean, the movie's a little bit over two hours long, so it never feels rushed and never feels ridiculous. But it moves at a good enough clip so you never get bored and you never get, you know, hang, hang, tied down in this thing. It moves at a really good pace. And it takes enough time, enough time, to let you care about the characters. You kind of get into the Johnny Utah character. Yes, the name is goddamn stupid. Why do they put those names in these movies? But you get into the Yanni, Johnny Utah character. You get into the whole Tyler character. You're trying to figure out how she is. She lets her guard down. You start to watch her go from a little bit of a tough ass to, a, to more of like, you know, uh, the, the girlfriend that he could really fall in love with forever. That kind of stuff. And you care about it. You even get into all the characters of the bad guys, if you will, because they're not really bad guys like you would think. I mean, they've done all these robberies, but they don't want to hurt anybody. They're not murderers. They're not killers. They're all that kind of shit. Yes, they're bad guys and deserve to go to jail the whole night. But they're kind of like that Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid version of bad guys. You know what I'm talking about? They're out there. They're breaking the law. They're doing their thing and all that kind of stuff. But really, they're just a bunch of chill dudes who want to hang out and have a laugh and you know, they're not trying to do anything bad to nobody, blah, 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 and they all care about their friends, and they're like, it's, it's those kind of bad guys. So, you're watching a motion picture that works on multiple different levels of multiple different relationships, and it has good pacing, solid storytelling, and it takes enough time to let you get invested in all the characters. If this was an hour and a half movie, it couldn't have done it. But at two hours and three minutes, or whatever the hell this thing is, it's paced perfectly. And one of the things I always love about Catherine Bigelow movies is she knows how to do action scenes. She knows how to build tension in an action scene. You've seen it so many times before, Strange Days being a great example, or The Hurt Lock or anything like that. She knows how to film action. And she knows how to film drama and the rest of it too. But action scenes really, really well. So she gets you engulfed into them. She gets into this like frenetic kind of feel that she puts into her movies where you're like literally your, your heart will start pumping and you really get amped up to it and into it. So she always delivers on that level. And this motion picture is packed with that kind of thing. So once again, perfect pacing, good story, good character development, good frenetic action, gets the heart pumping, it's that kind of motion picture. Again, it gives you what you're looking for. Now, are there any downsides? Of course there's downsides to any motion picture I've said it a million times. The, the McGinley carrier is just ridiculous. He's constantly a screaming and yelling FBI director who looks like he's about to ready to pop a blood vessel just because he woke up that morning. He's an asshole, but they make him too much of an asshole. It's almost a cartoon character. It really is. So they, they could have knacked that shit down just a little bit. Also, this motion does, this motion picture does have a little bit of that 80s feel still to it. It's not 70s realism. It has a little bit more of that lethal weapon, die hard, this would never work out in a million years type of shit. It has a little bit of that. You know what I mean? The cops are all a little bit rogue. They're all kind of just doing their own thing. Nobody's really getting that question by authority unless they throw McGinley in there just to scream like a fucking maniac for no apparent reason. So, yes. It's one of those motion pictures, you can't sit there and say, oh my God, this feels so real and so perfect. you got to kind of push that out of your head. And the whole end thing there, too, where, where fucking Keanu dives out of a plane with no parachute on just to chase somebody down, a la fucking James Bond style or something. Okay. You just have to roll with the motion picture and remember what you're watching. Okay? You just have to roll with it, get on the roller coaster, and enjoy it. That's what I mean about the lethal weapon vibe of this type of thing. It's just out there. It's having fun. The shit wouldn't happen. It wouldn't work like this. But it's still enjoyable, and you have a good time. All right, everybody. Get out there and watch yourself Point Break if you haven't seen it already. It's one of those motion pictures that it punches above what it's supposed to be. Good cop, action, drama, love story, all that. Works all within on a certain level and delivers what it's supposed to to deliver it to you. Sometimes it doesn't get remembered in the biggest works of AKA Patrick Swayze or AKA Keanu Reeves, but it actually showcases a hell of a good dynamic cast doing all really, really good work underneath the guise of a very, very, very talented director that knows how to give you motion pictures like this. 
Point Break, I can't believe it's been like 32 years now, because it still, to me, seems like a relatively modern flick. But, get out there, watch it, enjoy it. See Keanu before Keanu was Neo or John Wick. See Patrick Swayze when he's probably at some of the coolest he's ever fucking been. And watch the rest of a really, really good cast take you on a story ride that delivers and gives you just what you'd want for the kind of motion picture it is. All right, everybody, be good. Take care. Stay out of trouble. Be kind to a stranger. Be there for a friend. But most of all, never, and I mean never, take any bullshit from anybody. See y'all soon.